So probably a cube is the easiest thing that we can shade. So we're going to start off with that. We've just got a JPEG picture here of a, of a cube drawn in isometric. You can see on the layers, um, on the layer here in the tab, there's just a single background layer that's currently locked. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to choose my quick selection tool. And when my quick selection tool is on, I'm going to select, you can see the marching ants now around this shape. I've selected that top surface. I'm going to create a new layer. And then I'm just going to, for the time being, just so I know what that layer is, I'm going to put some color in it. So I'm going to choose a color, choose my color fill and bung it in there. Now, while I've still got this layer one highlighted, I'm going to kind of turn this into what's called um, a layer mask. And you can see now it's showing the black and the white and the white bit is the selected area. By doing this, I can maintain um, the selection anytime I want. So I can just click back on this layer to change the color. And you can see that afterwards. I'm just going to rename the layer before I go any further. So we'll call that one top. I'm going to go back to my background layer. I'm going to go back to my selection tool again, and I'm going to select this left side. I'm going to get again create a layer. I'm going to again fill some color. So pick my bucket tool again, change it to a different color maybe, and I'm going to fill that one. And the same thing, I'm going to turn that into a selection layer, and I'm going to rename it. And I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to do next. Same thing all over again. So select it, make a layer, bung some colour in it, turn it into a mask layer and give it a new name. Okay, so before I go any further I'm going to save that, make sure that that PSD, the Photoshop file is saved and I can now change these colours. So what I'm going to do before I go any further I'm probably going to set them all back to white just so I've got a a good starting point so I'm going to go through click each one and I'm just going to reset them I have to click it more than once if the color fill you can see up here the opacity is set to 50 we'll set that to 100 so I should only have to fill it once then uh, choose the white again fill this one do the same fill this one so I'm back to having three white sides but you can see from these mask layers that it's still keeping the areas masked off that I want to add color to. So, okay, so I'm going to choose a color. Um, if I click over here, even though I might change the color on the strip, I'm still over in the white area. So I'll bring my um, pointer over here. So I've got a kind of darker color going on. Um, the other thing that I can do, I can change it in one of two places, either up down here or up here. So I'm going to change the opacity. So basically, if it's 100% opaque, it's, it's a full solid color. So if I start off and I change this to about 50, and I drop the color into this um, sorry, I selected the wrong layer. Let me do Control Z and undo that. Go into the top layer and drop my 50% color into there. I'll select the light one, maybe change this to about 60, and click in there. And then I'm going to change it to maybe about 70, and I'm going to drop it in the right one. And so you can see the gradual light medium and dark going on now if I want to make it darker again I can click in there a second time and add a bit more color I can play around with it to get that shade in any way I want and if I decide later on that I don't want it to be pink I can just go back and change the colors again so that's the, a simple way of shading using the paint bucket tool and using the, the um, selection tool good luck